that. Way to smoke it. Way to smoke it. Way to smoke it. No! No! He wasn't unabated, Brian! He wasn't unabated! Sorry for missing last week's recap, guys. I did have some technical difficulties, but I didn't let any of that time go unwasted. In the meantime, I was working on a mini documentary, or I mean, I still am, so please stay tuned for that. But anyway, uh, week five of the UFL action was definitely something that we haven't seen much of at all this season. That was a bunch of lopsided games. I mean, we had some guys have some breakout games. Meanwhile, we did see some of these teams regress just a little bit. So we're going to hop right into this one. But welcome back to Justified Takes, where I tell you all of my takes that just so happen to be justified. The first game of the weekend was the battle of the Texas teams with the San Antonio Brahmas taking on the winless Arlington Renegades. The Brahmas started out good with a big gainer from their running back, John Lovett, but their drive was stopped after Vic Beasley sacked Dormady. The pilot in training drilled it through the upright for his fifth straight make on the season. And on the Renegades' first possession, Prescott strips sacked by Delonte Scott. The former Seattle Sea Dragon Morgan Ellison came out and had a field day on the Renegades as well, ripping off the biggest run of the night with a 47 yarder. Welcome back to spring football, fella. Dormady finds Mack over the middle for the first touchdown of the afternoon and served to be the only touchdown throw by Dormady of the game. The Renegades had a hard time getting anything going in the first quarter, but unfortunately for them, it was the opposite for the Brahmas. To start off the second quarter, the Brahmas break off a huge chunk play with this yak for Marquez Stevenson. But the running back tandem proved to be too much with Ellison setting up Lovett to walk it in for an easy score. Luis Perez went out there and did what Perez does and that's fine. Javante Payton butt naked in the middle of the field to score the quick strike to get the Renegades their first touchdown. But Arlington is becoming too predictable with these reverses and almost got burned. But shout out to Vaughns for at least stopping his F up from turning into points. On the following sequence, Dormady would throw the first of many interceptions, but this one wasn't his fault. Steven Jones Jr. gets one gifted to him due to Akers letting this one go right through his hands. The difference between these two teams, though, is hustle. Sure, the first half was close on the board, but the Brahmas were outclassing the Renegades, and it showed with this blocked field goal. And the Brahmas were a taint hair away from blocking a second one as well. Dormady was doing his best Ryan Tannehill impression by just handing the ball off and letting the back slice up the defense. Even though it was looking like Dormady gave the defenders his playbook once again, the rest of the promise willed this team to their fourth win on the season. And Stoops, you gotta mercy trade my man Perez out of there. Sure, he had a down game, but he serves to be consistent with a terrible O-line. I mean, and the Renegades may be out of playoff contention, but they are definitely still in contention for being the worst team. The second game of the weekend was the Birmingham Stallions at the Houston Roughnecks. Now, typically I like to do like a drive by drive type of analysis, right? But with this game, it kind of felt like it was over before it ever really even started. And if you watch this game, then you know what I'm talking about because it didn't even feel like that the Roughnecks were even competing. Mini Vic got the starting nod for the Stallions this week and he dismantled them all game long. Like breaking off this third 34 yard run off the zone wreath set up Ricky Person Jr. to walk in the first touchdown of the game. But this game, it really felt like Skip Holtz wanted to see how many rushing yards he could put up on the Roughnecks this week. The Stallions had 213 rushing yards with Martinez having 138 of them. Larry Rouncey put up 50 additional with a touchdown and I feel like I'm forgetting a person putting up two additional touchdowns on the ground. You see what I did there? Martinez also threw for 150 five yards and this beautiful touch pass to Sternberger for a touchdown as well. And truth be told, Reed Sennett had a pretty decent game throwing for 203 yards with a ridiculous 71.1% completion percentage, including this beautiful dime to Kiki Chisholm. But he did have that ugly interception late in the second quarter that would have been in for six, but Jojo Tiller's hamstring made the open field tackled on him instead. Reed Sennett would make up for the interception with another beautiful throw to Chisholm, who made an even better catch, honestly, with the defender pulling his jersey. But that's really all the good that I have to say about the Roughnecks. And it's hard to look good in this offense, though, to be honest. I mean, I think I've seen high school offensive schemes look better than what CJ Johnson is cooking up. And you know, the more and more that we watch the season and we see the Stallions play, it's looking like that they honestly, the only team that could beat them will be themselves. The third game of the weekend was the Battlehawks flying high 
high into the den of the beer snakes. Blake Jackson opened up the game with a 58 yard return to set up the Battle Hawks with great field position. But unfortunately, the great field position was squandered when Malik Fisher strip sacked AJ. But just like the Hawks, DC couldn't capitalize off the turnover because Tayamu just aired this one out right into the hands of Brandon Sebastian for the easy interception. The AJ to Butler connection was on display all day with this beautiful pitch and catch to put the Battle Hawks on the board. Hakeem Butler had a career day with 143 yards and two touchdowns. DC really had no answers for him. The Battle Hawks defense was soaring high as well. Not only having an interception on Tayamu on the second possession of the game, but their defense was putting pressure on him all day long, including two sacks with Pita having both of those sacks. They even blocked a punt to set up the Battle Hawks in the red zone, but with an untimely sack, the Hawks drive was cut short. Tayamu was picked off for the second time after Roland was level trying to catch this pass. The defenders finally got themselves on the board late in the second quarter, scoring two touchdowns in the final two minutes of the first half but that was the last time that we would see dc get into the end zone this game but the crazy thing is is that up until late into the third quarter both of these offensive numbers for these teams looked extremely similar but in typical aj mccarry in the hawks fashion he put on a show the battle hawks dismantled the defenders in every single facet it was like taking sheep to slaughter everybody and their grandma scored a touchdown on the dc defense two of their running backs found pay dirt and then just to pour salt into the wound, their backup quarterback came in and ran in one himself. Then their defense stripped Tayamu and stopped the defenders on fourth and two right as they were building momentum. Not to mention this interception by Mike Rose to give Tayamu his third of the day. The best way to describe this game is honestly this comment. And in the final game of the weekend, the Panthers came into Memphis with a head full of steam. This Michigan defense forced a turnover on the first possession of the game. With EJ Perry still being out due to the hammy injury from last week, Danny Etling got the start. No Perry, no problem. Wes Hills made the best of the situation by absolutely torching the showboat's defense in the first drive of the day, hurtling defenders and waltzing in for six. Not to mention, Hills making them look stupid on this fake punt to break off this run to get the Panthers a first down and this was an absolute backbreaker for this showboat's defense but if it wasn't Wes then it was Matthew Colburn torching this defense he snapped off the longest run of the day with this 39 yard touchdown scamper really not trying to be mean here but how does Troy Williams still have a job look I'm not trying to take anything away from the guy okay nor am I just hating on him without cause but I mean just watch this throw to Jonathan Adams Imagine if this ball was thrown with a little bit more mustard on it and it hit Adams in stride. He would have walked it in for six, but instead he just airs it out to him. And these are the things that I'm talking about. At Link's stats might have looked a little lackluster, but he did make some big time throws. And he even ran in a touchdown to Otter and his injured teammate. Wes Hills finished the game with a rushing hat trick, not to mention an additional two touchdowns that were scored on the ground by other rushers. The Panthers are rolling and they finally look good on both sides of the ball. Their defense finished with eight tackles for losses, seven sacks, and two interceptions. It finally happened, guys. Jake the Great missed a field goal, and they say when it rains, it pours, and it sure does, because he not only missed one, he missed two field goals. But it's okay. The master baitster is going to come back next week stronger than ever. Thank you guys for making it to the end of the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, please leave me with a like, or maybe if you're feeling generous, maybe subscribe. Just like I said earlier in the video, I am working on another like mini documentary type thing so please just stay tuned for that number one problem with ufo merch is that it's super expensive but i have been working with a couple of artists to make some ufo merch that's fairly inexpensive and if you guys are looking to support me or maybe even show some team spirit check the link out down in the description and get yourself some merch also if you are a fan of sports history then you should come check out my youtube shorts or my tiktok where i post daily hey guys welcome back to another episode